Hey YouTube, uh, reviewing the S1000R today, 2014 model. It's going to be the same as the 2015 model. This bike's in uh, red as you can see and uh, I'm excited to review this bike. So I'm going to do a walk around before we start the ride and uh, go over some cool features. Uh, first thing is this is going to be the same power plant as the S1000RR, just uh, detuned, slightly different gearing. Uh, this motor is going to produce 160 horsepower, 83 foot-pounds of torque, uh, which is a pretty respectable number, I think, uh, these days. You can see on this bike I've got the electronic suspension option. It's going to be covered in the uh, dynamic package. It's got a really cool uh, updated display. Uh, hopefully you can see the top of the suspension and see the uh, electronic componentry. Uh, on the left uh, control stock, you're going to see that we've got uh, a trip info button, an ABS, and the DDC control button, which is going to adjust your suspension. I'll go over that uh, when we jump on the bike as well. And on the top, uh, you've got the uh, cruise control stock, which you see with the off on right next to the uh, flashers or the emergency flashers. And then you move around to the back side, and you still have your standard uh, pass uh, and uh, high beam uh, fixed on button. And uh, if you take a look, we've still got the same Brembo braking system that you find on the S1000RR. Uh, it's got your ABS ring in there. Really cool to see that it's got braided lines uh, from the factory. That's a nice touch, especially for the occasional track day guy. Um, you've got a similar style exhaust system um, to the S1000RR. Black swing arm, which I've always wanted on some of the colors. I know in 2014, they have the gray white and the black S1000RRs. Actually, the black S1000RRs always had a black swing arm. But I noticed there's two models for 14 that have it. Move around to this side, take a look at some of the uh, nice features. Fortunately, now we're in the sun. But uh, the bike's got really, really nice uh, lines to it. It's actually quite a long bike. Again, I'll go over a lot of that stuff in the video. Uh, but it is a really impressive package um, of a bike. Uh, I think um, it's what a lot of people have been looking for. A real a bike that you're going to be able to have, as you can see, a sports style seat. You're going to sit on the bike and you're going to have a, a, a good, a, a decent rake, but not too much to where you can't spend all day on it, can't do a longer ride on it, tour on it, commute on it, whatever you want to do. And the nice thing is that BMW, for what's in it, for being a leader bike and keeping all the technology in it, um, it still weighs 456 pounds, which it's definitely not light light, but it's I would say not uh, Not above the norm. I would say it uh, does have additional features as you can see here. We've got the quick shifter We've got a 530 chain um, and we've got you know, All the electronic features you're looking for like I've mentioned ABS traction control wheelie mode uh, built into the traction control system uh, let's uh, go on here. Let me turn the ignition on. So you can see as it cycles through, hopefully the display is visible through the camera. Right now we've got on the left hand side, we've got uh, two blinking lights. Uh, the top is going to be our traction control and what will light up when you try to wheelie or if you lose traction. And your bottom, which is labeled ABS, is obviously going to be your ABS. So. Going through, I'm going to try to switch my camera hand here. So going through, we have on the stock, I'm going to click the suspension button. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to click this here. And as I click this, you'll see on the right-hand side of the digital display, now it says DDC, and on the, the area selection it says Norm. So where it says norm is going to be DDC normal. Let's click it again. Now we have DDC hard. One more time. DDC soft. So those are going to be the three available modes that you've got for your suspension. Now on the left hand side of the digital display you're going to see mode selection. And the bike is also going to have three available modes. As you can see here there's our mode button so it's going to be on the right hand side as well right on top while we're there you'll see we've got the heated grips uh, button there which is also really nice and they work really well so let's click on modes and go through the three modes right now I'm on dynamic mode let's uh, go through there you can see our three available modes we've got rain road and dynamic and I'll leave the rest for when we're on the bike um, so that we can go over uh, how they all work and uh, 
the functions of them. But other than that, this gives you a basic idea. We've got, if we move to the front of the bike, we've got a fly screen here, um, and we've got our projector headlight beam, and we've got our running light, if you will. The fly screen works really well. The aerodynamics, again, all this stuff I'll touch base on on the bike, is pretty darn impressive. Uh, you would think for a non fared bike that you're going to have the decision of do I want to get away from that full wind coverage and um, that kind of uh, barrier that you have with a fully fared bike. And interestingly enough, on this bike, they've done so well with the uh, aerodynamic uh, design on it that it really has what feels like no wind at all. Of course there is, but if it, it doesn't bother me at all. I can spend all day on this bike as I have today and continue on. No worries in the world, no helmet buffeting, no wind fatigue, anything like that. And uh, I think that's one of my favorite features of the bike. Again, I'll touch base on all that. Uh, one of the other nice things I'm gonna add is unlike a lot of the uh, newer bikes that I, I have been riding, um, this bike actually has a good fuel tank size. It carries about four and a half gallons of fuel. And I'm averaging on this bike about 45 to 50 miles a gallon, right in that ballpark. Um, it definitely gives you great range so that you can uh, stay on the bike for longer periods of time without having to stop and refuel. Um, the rear shock area here, you're gonna see that there is a point right here. Let me point at it. If you take a look at that, that is gonna be what works with your electronic suspension. It's gonna detect movement of the swing arm and it's gonna use that gyro to translate all the movement um, to the computer to let it know what to do and what's going on back there as part of it. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is that it's all plastic and I just don't know the durability or longevity of that piece. Um, and I could be completely off base, but it seems to me like uh, it doesn't seem overly strong say something impacts it not that anything really could there but just seems like it uh, could be a, a potential fit point of failure at some point um, other than that I'm very happy with the bike I actually do quite like the design I back up from it a bit and I uh, love the, the fact that it kept the RR wheels uh, this bike's got the Diablo Rosso Corsa I believe yeah the Rosso Corsa tires and um, it's a 190.55 in the rear, and it's going to be a 120.70 up front, I believe. It's confirmed. Yeah, 120.70 up front. So uh, standard sizes, and the 190 in the rear is is definitely the uh, same as the RR. It's a nice big tire in the back. And um, other than that, I think we've gone through all the basic stuff on the walk around. Uh, we've got the standard RR tail light which always looks good. I've always liked that feature of it. And other than that, it does come with the standard uh, tank pad from BMW, so if you don't see that at your dealer, uh, either they haven't put it on, but it, my understanding is they all should come with it. Uh, other than that, uh, let's jump on, go for a ride, and uh, go through the rest of the stuff. Thanks. All right, guys, so just getting on the bike now. Let's get the ignition going. And start her up. I've already uh, ridden the bike up, it's already up to temperature, so I'm just going to uh, throw my gloves on here and let's get moving. Okay, so I already went over uh, some of the basic specs on the bike. Um, I'm going to try and turn the bars here, hopefully you can see it's so on the left hand side. If you can see this, uh, there's going to be a set of two buttons which is uh, labeled ABS and then there's an icon for what looks like a shock or the rear suspension and uh, it is exactly what it looks like it controls your suspension with the th three different settings you've got and if you can see on the dash hopefully that will show uh, there brings up DDC uh, it's currently on norm for normal press again you have DDC hard and DDC soft uh, I really don't think there's too much explanation there it's exactly as you see it and then when you click ABS attached to the ABS there's another icon there with an exclamation mark let me just get moving hope oh, my kickstand was down and uh, there's a icon with an exclamation mark that's for your traction control so this bike has 
a quick shifter and it has basically all the features that you find in an S1000RR with the addition of cruise control. Uh, and it, these are all part of the dynamic package. Now, one of the features that guys were really happy with about this bike when it came out was the fact that BMW had incorporated the DDC technology, which was commonly uh, found in the HP4. Now, the electronic suspension is a rather new technology for sport bikes. Obviously, it's not very commonly out there right now. You find bikes like Ducati that have electronically controlled set suspension, so it's not active, where in this case your suspension is active, meaning in each mode that you're in, the bike is always adapting to the road conditions, to bumps, to ruts, smooth roads, rough roads, and it's adapting to all conditions to try and get the suspension suitable for everything you know for exactly what you're doing so if you're on a rough road even in a normal bike if you've got a really stiff setting say your bike is primarily a track bike well it's always going to be stiff unless of course you change your settings in this case it's adapting to wherever you're at so if you're on a rough road like I said it's going to soften the suspension a bit and it's going to basically do whatever it needs to do to keep the bike as sane, if you will, on the road as possible. So basically, it's going to try to do as much as it can to keep the bike planted and confidence inspiring on the road. Now, for guys who are racers or coming off a sport bike that frequently tracks, you're going to find that this is quite a change because as you are used to having a bike in which everything is predictable, you know what it's going to do when you brake to, you know, 50% braking, 75% braking, or 100% braking, you know what it's going to do under second gear, higher revs, full throttle. How much is it going to sit in the rear? How much brake dive are you going to get? Those are all things that you learn and muscle memory, etc. Well, on this bike, it's a different story because uh, depending on where you are, maybe you're going downhill at a rapid speed and it's a bumpy road, you're going to find that the suspension's changing even mid corner and it takes time to get used to that. Um, for me, Personally, I don't like the suspension. I see huge advantages, and when I first got on this bike, the first thing I noticed is, wow, this is riding on, on air, basically. It's it's so smooth in DDC norm on the road. You, you just glide over everything, just about, and it's almost surreal that your suspension is working. You can, um, you can feel how much it's working and how much of the road it's absorbing for you, wearing a typical sport style suspension. It, you know, it, it doesn't feel that way. You definitely feel it's rough and uh, maybe not rough, but depending on your settings, it's, it's the same all the time. So the DDC is definitely one of the bigger features on this bike for me and the one part of it that I've been playing with the most for sure. DDC hard, uh, I think would be great on the racetrack if you're taking it for an occasional track day. I think it, I think the dampening adjustment there would make it suitable for, for a good track day. Is it a race suspension? No, but it definitely would do the job and more, more than that even. I mean, when I'm saying I don't like the suspension, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not what I'm used to. It's not what I've been riding on for my time riding, it's 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 different. It, it may, maybe it's something I would warm up to over time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a basically a detuned, well not basically, it is a detuned S1000RR motor producing 160 horsepower in this model. Different gearing of course to suit road uh, use and uh, I'm going to show you an example here. I'm. If you haven't already noticed while watching the video, I'm in third gear right now. Hopefully you can see the display. And I'm in about 3000 RPM. Now, if you've ridden an RR, you know that the bike is pretty unhappy with you right about now. Now on this bike, I'm going to give it 40% throttle. Unbelievable. The power doesn't feel down from the RR at all when you're riding this bike on your standard roads. In fact, it still feels like 
it has way, way more power than you need. And it does. I mean, let's be honest, 160 horsepower is no joke. One of the additional features on this bike that is different from the RR, so let's go straight here, is that it's got a different display. Obviously, this display still has an analog tack, which I am a big fan of. I love being able to just look down and reference, see exactly where the uh, gauge is reading rather than having to look at my digital cluster like my CBR or the Panigale, for example. Uh, this is still my preference. It's just, for me, what I like. So I'm going to say it's very easy to see regardless of sunlight, very uh, easy to reference. Everything that's important is outlined in, in larger writing. It's things such as your odometer and your trip meter, etc. are in a smaller area on the bottom right because those are things obviously you need to reference right away. You can take an extra second to look to see how many miles your bike has where it's probably more important to see, well, how fast am I going? What gear am I in? What RPMs am I at? In addition, if you can't see on the display right now, you'll see that underneath the speed, it's showing dynamic. And what dynamic is, is one of three available modes that this motorcycle has. On the right side on the of the handlebars, there's a button that says mode. And when you select it, I'm gonna have to come off throttle to do it. So let's back off, click mode. We've got rain, road, and dynamic. To switch between modes, you can do it while moving, but you have to be off throttle, meaning you can't be under load or giving the bike any throttle for it to engage. If I want to do it, I just back off, and instantly, if you saw there, it stopped blinking and it selected the mode. If I want to switch into rain, let me click, rain mode, I'm off, selected, continue on my way. The difference between rain mode, road, and dynamic is not, as big as the difference I would say would be on the S1000RR. So now I've gone through all three modes. I just went through rain, road, and dynamic. And there is no question a difference. Throttle response in rain is gonna be far less. You're not gonna be able to jump on the throttle, get an instant sport response, if you will. It's gonna be more detuned, more applicable for riding in the rain. Road mode, I would say, is gonna be a happy medium. It's gonna be plenty response, Definitely not sluggish. It's gonna do everything that you're gonna need or want out of it on the road. And dynamic is gonna give you that extra flavor, which is gonna just basically allow you to get that extra feel out of the bike, uh, which for me is, I, I gen generally like to ride in the most. I like to have the most connection with the throttle, most connection with the bike when at all possible. And dynamic would be the closest. So you'll find that I'll, I will ride in dynamic mode most often. Let's switch it there now that I said that. Okay. Moving forward, the DDC with regards to brake diving, and I mentioned this now as I got to the stop here, the DDC ha does a fantastic job of preventing the nose from having much dive, if any at all. Yeah, even under very hard braking, of course your front forks will move downward due to the forces, but it really does a nice job of keeping the bike level and planted and it is pretty confidence inspiring for somebody who's jumping on this bike maybe off a smaller CC and wanting to get into something that they can tour on. Um, and talking about touring, that's one of the things I really didn't hit, hit on on this bike yet is that being a naked bike, one of the concerns many people are going to have is the lack of fairings, is that going to affect their ability to do all types of riding, whether it's commuting, you know, local city riding, maybe a guy looking to ride this bike, you know, on the weekends, do the canyon runs, wondering how, what's the effect of not having the fairings? Is it big enough to where 
the decision between this or the RR is, is, is making you unsure which to purchase. And so that was one of the big things I wanted to find out, you know, how is the aerodynamic on this bike? What's the wind like? You know, how, how beat up am I getting from it without the windscreen, without the full fairings? And I'll tell you, it was pretty surprising the first time I got on it. And as soon as I got on it, just made two miles, jumped on the highway to head home that night. And the first thing that blew me away, and I was wearing a Schubert SR1 helmet, which is obviously a race helmet if you know much about it. Great helmet, by the way. And I always know that that's not a great helmet for naked bikes, at least hasn't been for my, for me. I find it has generally a lot of buffeting, and of course it's more of a race helmet, so it's not designed for that style of use. But to my surprise, the aerodynamics on this bike, especially with the small... I don't know if you'll call it windscreen or fly screen that this bike has on the front, especially with those features on it and the design of the front headlights, I was pretty amazed how little wind, if any at all, I was getting. I think that most people, when they ride a naked bike, would prefer either no wind or all the wind hitting them, not just on your helmet, you know? I prefer that, at least myself, where if I'm gonna be hit with the wind, I prefer it, it's more of an even block of wind rather than just hitting my helmet or just the top of my helmet. I find that that, that's, that kind of wind buffeting um, has a far worse effect for me, personally at least. So this bike is great because whether I'm wearing my Arai Corsair 5 or my Schubert or the uh, SR1 or the S2, um, I feel, I really find very little difference at all um, with the wind buffeting, um, which is, I think, an important factor that people should consider. As you can see through this review thus far, I've just been riding through city streets, and the bike is extremely manageable um, and doesn't bother me at all to ride. It feels as nimble and as comfortable as my FC9, if not more so. Um, I think BMW did a great job on this bike of incorporating the right amount of the right amount of sag and the right right amount of sag, the right amount of rake, excuse me, on the bike, um, so that the bike gives you enough forward angle to be comfortable, yet it. Uh, doesn't lean you too far over where you're getting uh, fatigued too quickly. It's it's a nice happy medium so that you can really go and ride, transfer to a really sporty position, leaned over if you'd like, maybe a slight tuck, obviously you're not tucking under a windscreen so there's not a huge advantage, but maybe get down a bit, lower your your, your helmet down a little bit farther, increase the aerodynamics for yourself and, and, and the bike, and then it also allows you, as I'm riding now, to just pick my head up, sit almost straight up and down, really, really comfortable, and uh, ride around the city. And that's part of the beauty about this bike. It really does a little bit of everything. I guess the word would be jack of all trades. And that's basically what this bike does. And it doesn't lack big time in any which department for me. I find that when I want it to be very nimble, it is. And when I find when I need to to have that stability, whether it's on the highway or with crosswinds or whatever, I don't find that the bike gets unsettled easily. And it's hard to find a bike that can meet all of those expectations that you may have. So going back to my comparison with guys who are maybe looking at an S1000RR, the fully fared version, and guys all, that are looking between the RR and this bike, I would say you're in a tough position. If you ride only on the road, I don't care if that means you're riding your local canyon spot, maybe the Snake, uh, maybe Palomar Mountain if you're in California, any of those places, you would have no business needing an S1000RR. That's not what that bike is for. This bike will do everything the S1000RR will do on the road in more comfort with more creature comforts such as cruise control. But it'll, it'll allow you when you're done playing in the canyons or when you're done racing through your favorite roads to go Monday morning and go to work or commute on the highway if you need to in comfort and not have an adventure style bike 
a big large motorcycle so it keeps it into a, a small enough package I mean this bike is I wouldn't call it small but it's definitely in a far far smaller package than some adventure bike maybe like a GS or a Triumph Tiger or something of that sort and I think that's another big advantage that you'll find with uh, with this bike and it's something that has intrigued me a lot I also think for primarily road riding the DDC is a feature that's hard to get away from it it does offer a good amount of advantages for the road I mean after all DDC was not designed for the racetrack it was designed for the road and I think it does a great job at that um, I think it does take getting used to if you haven't ever ridden a bike with electronic or and I shouldn't call electronic to be more specific active suspension then you, you're going to need to do more than just go to your local dealership and give this bike a test ride. I mean, you may go to BMW, and one of the nice things about BMW, one of the reasons that I'm always attracted to the brand, is that you can pretty much go to any BMW dealership, and this is the case at least in California where I live, that you can go to most any dealership, find any one of the BMW models that you want, whether it be the GS, the S1000R, and get on it and test ride before purchase. I think that should be the case with every brand. And I don't know why uh, the Japanese manufacturers haven't instituted or haven't don't have dealers that participate in a program like that. I think that would I think that's just such a crucial thing. I know that I'm fortunate to be able to ride these bikes and put, you know, a couple thousand miles on them and do all that and then decide maybe hey, if I want to get one for myself, but at the end of the day uh, I really believe that BMW does a great job allowing customers or potential customers to go test ride the bike and see what they can get out of it. And a lot of my dealers will let you go for an hour or two, so that's a nice thing. So again, I suggest going to your dealer and maybe giving it a shot, but what I'm getting at is it is hard to get the entire dynamic of this bike in a short test ride. I mean, 10, 15, 20 miles just isn't going to do it for you more than likely to get a full feel. You're going to have to try a little bit of everything. And right now, for example, I've just been cruising through the city as I'm going through some of the basics and then I'll try to go through a couple of the short roads in this area. Not that there's too much around me today, but I'll try and go through a couple short roads in this area and see if I can pick up the pace a little bit and just show you how flickable this bike is as well. Um, talk about the brakes for a minute. Um, so this bike still uses the Brembo uh, brake calipers, both front and rear. Uh, the rear I'm not overly impressed with, but the front is something noteworthy. Uh, BMW has, if I'm not mistaken, a proprietary pad compound for their Brembo braking system. And uh, a lot of guys uh, have talked about it since uh, the S1000 was released uh, many years ago now. And the uh, brakes on this bike are no exception. They're absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I mean, braking power is, it's overbraked, which I like. And most motorcycles, I suppose one would say it's overbraked, but the BMW is definitely one of the better factory uh, suspensions that I've ridden on. A uh, suspension's brakes. I don't know what's wrong with me today. And I think that one of the other keys to the braking system here is that with the ABS system, I'm I'm not a big fan of of electronic aids um, on bikes. Um, it just as I've gotten used to riding and in my training, I've always been put on bikes that have no rider aids. So getting onto a bike like this, the rider aids are definitely more polished than. Uh, I don't know what was going on there. The rider aids on this bike are definitely far more polished than I'd say most of the other manufacturers I've ridden on. The ABS is not so much intrusive. I've, I mean, I, I don't really engage ABS, so I guess it's hard for me to say whether it's intrusive. It hasn't, through any of the riding I've done so far with it, it hasn't jumped in, kicked in, and I felt that it was a problem. You know, sometimes under hard braking, if you're able to get the DDC fooled to where you're able to get that rear tire lifted up, um, shy of that, I really don't find that there's any any intrusiveness with the ABS. The traction control, however, is a totally different story. I really don't know how guys are riding these bikes on the track with traction control engaged. I mean, it plain and simple doesn't let you do anything and maybe I guess maybe I'm wrong and that maybe that's what it's for maybe it's supposed to be really intrusive so you really can't do anything and it it keeps you as completely safe as possible but to me 
it's not just slip, your wheelie control, anything. You can't power out of a corner on this bike and get any front wheel height out of it if you need to. Um, regardless of how smooth your exit is on the corner, the traction control, which is also effectively a wheelie control on this bike, I'll show you here. That was 80% throttle. If I had the traction control off, I'd have the nose up, and I'll show you. Let's do it again here. Everything's on, dynamic mode, however. Let's go over this little ledge, and I'm gonna give it full throttle. That's it, Put, throws me down. Do it again. And it keeps me down. Hard braking, bike stays flat, go to the corner. The suspension there, and I'm sure all that is hard to see in the video, but I did a little bit of a hooligan act, recovered hard on my brakes, turned into that corner, and then was able to go through that corner exactly as I would had I entered it properly. And that's what I'm saying, hard to translate in the video, but the bike just does so much work between the DDC and the AIDS um, that you got to give it credit for what it's doing. I mean, I'm not practicing proper techniques right now, and the bike is making it look like I'm doing everything perfectly, and I'm not. I know I'm not. And I think that's that's part of the confidence that guys get. Unfortunately, when, side note, with the S1000 owners that I know personally, most of them, if they weren't on this bike, would be far, far slower, because the aids just do so much, and this is effectively autopilot. And uh, I think that I'm not making a general judgment of S1000 owners, I'm just basing it on the uh, ones I, on most of the ones I know, and I know that most of them that ride on the road, and not the track, uh, would have a hard time riding this bike, say you disconnected all the aids, I would be surprised if they would, were be, would be able to replicate the miles they had on their bike without dumping it. And I know I'm going to get some flack on the comments for that, but I'm just being honest. And that's just because the electronics here just do so much, it's unbelievable. But nonetheless, they're excellent electronics. Now, as I turn up here, I'm going to come around, I would like to turn off the traction control and I'd like to show you the difference in the way that the bike reacts. Um, and some of the pros and cons of this chassis. Um, one of the things as, I, as we get to that is the bike does have a quick shifter, which I think is just, should be standard practice these days on sport bikes. Uh, but the BMW quick shifter is pretty good. Um, honestly, the Ducati quick shifter is better. It's uh, more responsive. It uh, requires, it's a little more sensitive, requires less input from the rider, uh, so you don't have to give it uh, an, a heel full, if you will, or an ankle full to get it to click to the next gear. Some guys I've spoken with say that they don't have that issue, they feel that, that it is pretty sensitive, but for whatever reason, even on my S1000RR that I had reviewed, I found that the quick shifter, or the shifter itself, required a good amount of pressure to engage. And uh, that's just something that I've experienced myself. May not be the case for everybody, but uh, that's definitely a, something I've noted. Now, I'm still in dynamic mode, and I can tell you that it doesn't change the rideability of this bike in the city and through stop-and-go style traffic. I know that on, for example, the Yamaha FZ9, which has three modes as well, a, a standard and C mode, if you ask most of the guys that haven't tuned the or flashed the ECU to try and make it better, A mode is almost unrideable in the city. It's so aggressive, it's rough, it's choppy on and off throttle. And on the flip side, BMW, whether you're you're in rain, road, or dynamic, the ease of starting, stopping, shifting, etc. is 
all the same to me. I don't find that one is far more responsive than the other to where it's unrideable in the city and only racetrack style use. I think BMW did a great job of making sure that they kept all the design features of this bike catered to the proper use and the demographic. And since this bike more than, as even though when I've been on the track days, I have seen you know a fair amount of S1000Rs, this, this particular model out there, the majority of the people are gonna spend their time on the public roads and that's great, that's what it's for. Uh, it's there to have all the abilities of a sport bike in more comfort and I think that that's, that's a great thing to have in the market. Now I mentioned earlier in the video that this bike has a rather long wheelbase in comparison to, at least I feel it does, in comparison to other bikes that I've been on. And uh, it definitely feels that way when you are messing around with it. It's very planted and it's pretty smooth. Um, one of the nice things is that when you're riding this bike, and again, I just, I'm in second gear still, this guy around the roundabout slowed down a lot. And I didn't have to do anything, no clutch work, nothing. I went down to 1,200 RPMs, and the bike didn't even stutter. Didn't it? Didn't it? Didn't you know jerk me back and forth? Nothing. It was extremely smooth, and I think that that's pretty darn awesome uh, fueling on this bike. It's really fueled well on the bottom end, and it makes it just so easy to ride. It doesn't jerk you around. It doesn't mess about with you. I think that's really really cool. I'm not sure what this guy's doing. Anyways, let's get on the highway here. So, I told you guys I was going to show you a couple of the features, but I'm going to do that in an extra second. Let's get on the highway. We're in second gear right now. Let's let's just click the third. 3,000 RPM, 35 miles an hour, 10% throttle, getting on really smooth. I'm going to use the quick shifter. There we go. Fourth gear. Let's go to fifth fifth with the quick shifter. Red match down back to fourth. Let's pass this guy. Signal. Signal also is really easy to reach on it. Absolutely no wind. I feel nothing different from riding in the city. Same amount of wind. Honestly, no change. I'm super comfortable. Let's go back down to third. One of the other things I'm going to add about this bike, um, I'm sorry I mentioned things just as I notice them. The engine braking is is very well dialed in. I don't feel that the bike has too aggressive of an engine braking to where you let off and it just just almost feels like the front end's diving down and it's braking so hard. It's really plain and really tame. Let's go to fifth. And again, fifth gear. In fact, let's go to sixth just to see what it would be for the average person on the highway. Sixth gear. Speed limit 65. So let's see, at 65, we're at 4,500 RPM. Let's get up to where most people are going to travel, about 75. And at 75, we're at about 5,300 or so. So I would say that the RPMs are uh, definitely a bit lower than the S1000RR uh, from the factory sprocket setup and gearing. Uh, and I like it. Now, having ridden this bike about 70 miles today on the highway, I can tell you one of the things I noticed slightly improved, yet not perfect, is on the S1000RR, if you're an owner, you can probably relate to this. When you're cruising at about 75 miles an hour, there's a, a buzz from the engine that is running through into the handlebars. And it's that perfect amount of vibration that makes your hands go dead, or numb, if you will. And uh, this bike is slightly improved. It feels like it maybe has a better engine dampener. I don't know that that factually, but it feels maybe slightly less vibration. But I still get that terrible numbness in my hand after a little while on it from that vibration. But luckily with this bike, and I'm gonna actually get back on for one more exit here. So if you see on the left uh, chalk stick, I'm going to actually, let me exit here, it's easier to show you. On the left chalk stick, there's an on and off, and you probably can't see where the camera's set up right now, and I apologize about that. But on the left-hand side, where your signal would be on this bike, and where I showed earlier the ABS and the DDC controller, is where the cruise control stock is for this bike. 
And I will say BMW did a fantastic design job on it because it's not finicky, it doesn't have too many options. Second gear, by the way, at 10 miles an hour. No reason on this bike to ever need to go to first through your typical city commuting, which I think is great. I hate having to cross over neutral if I don't have to. Uh, especially when you're using the quick shifter if you use it in the city and at low speeds. Um, you'll probably find out that you're going to hit a lot of false neutrals if you're uh, on the BMWs if you're not uh, under some sort of load. Uh, or moving quick enough, if you will. Speed bumps, just going to go over it. Amazing, the bike notices right away that that bump and it softens the rear up so that it doesn't buck you in the rear. It, it, it's, it's it, response time, I'd say, is pretty, pretty insane. Um, it doesn't obviously know what's coming up. It just knows it as it hits it. But in that period of time that my front tire goes over it and my rear tire hits it, it's already changed the settings so that my rear tire uh, or the back of the bike doesn't try to buck me off the top of the speed bump. Um, and that example will relate to standard riding where maybe you high noon and the sun's right above you and you couldn't see a pothole or a big dip in the road and you smashed it and on your typical bike you launched out of the seat maybe. On this bike, it's not necessarily that you can hit a huge hole and you know, you're not gonna feel it. It's just that it'll do a better job of uh, holding it so that you're not being beat up by it, which I think is awesome. All right, so let's on this road, let's turn off the traction control, which would be a matter of holding down the traction control button for about uh, two seconds. One, two, uh, even quicker. So on the dash, you'll see now that there's the light lit up, which is indicating that my traction control is disabled. Now, once that's the case, and I give the bike throttle, I instantly feel a smoother on-throttle response from the bike. Um, and that's how I started to realize how intrusive the traction control is on it. Because as I started to ride, I would feel how much more feel to the rear tire I would get. And uh, that was an indication of, of how much work the traction control was doing in a lot of cases. And of course, the bike has a lot of power, but more than horsepower, it's got torque. And the torque is really what you feel in the city and in, in, your, in your stop and go riding, not the horsepower. And this bike is definitely not shy on torque. And you'll notice that uh, as you start to use it in mid-corner, you can really get that rear tire to pull so hard, you, you, you really rely on the use of that mechanical grip uh, to keep it uh, completely connected in a mid-corner situation. But with clean throttle, the bike is just so fun to ride. It's so easy and so responsive to get the bike to really do whatever you want, which is some of the beauty of it. Let's see if we can get around this guy real quick. He's kind of holding me up a tad. Ah, it's not going to help. It's busy there. So let's, let's continue here for a minute and see if I can turn up on the road up here and show a couple more features of this bike real quick. But again, as you've been watching this video, you'll see maybe while I'm blabbering on on the display that one of the things I forgot to mention, and as I'm looking down now for my reference, is this bike has a fuel gauge, which I think is a nice feature to have for a bike that's used on the road a lot because knowing when you're going to need fuel is better than just having your gas light come on and I guess on most bikes you tend to learn how many miles you can put before your gas light comes on but in this case it's even better you'll always be able to have more of an accurate reference by just looking down and saying okay I've got half a thing up oh, quarter three quarters whatever um, I think that's a nice for the S1000R and I'm glad BMW put it on and I'm glad that they kept all the sport features on the bike as well such as you know, the shift uh, light and having that programmable. It still has a lap timer by just clicking on info. You see best lap there in the top, so you get your lap and your best lap. So they still kept the features that you want um, on the bike that uh, most people are gonna use. So I think that that's uh, nice. They didn't take it away and say, oh, you're buying a touring bike, why do you need it? They kept everything that you would need there. So okay, let's see if we can get going on this road, show you how this, power band is. So I'm at 40-50% throttle and I'm just going to go hit it. 90 miles an hour, second gear, nothing. Like, it's, it's crazy. Let's do it again. Wow. And it's so controlled. The throttle is very, very, very controlled. Hard on the brakes, slow it down. 
unbelievable. Front brakes, keeps it planted, keeps the nose up, doesn't let allow for a ton of dive. It really, really keeps the bike level so that you can get yourself approached for that next corner, which is great. Loop around here, nice smooth on the throttle. Hit on, hit it. Hard on the brakes, slow it down. Back on, nice smooth, clean throttle. This is a very bumpy section of road. Wow, the, look how the DEC is adapting to that. Wow, wow. Unbelievable. I mean, that's the type of stuff that you pay for on this bike is that ability to just go over all kinds of various roads, bad roads, good roads, rutted, concrete, asphalt, and have the bike do so much work and it really makes the riding on the road far more pleasurable. And I know guys that have GS's or Super Tenere's or any bike like a Multistrada with the active suspension, Skyhook for example on the Ducati they know that it does so much work and having that, keeping the bike flat and all that is just such a big part of uh, the enjoyment on these bikes. The technology is there. Smooth throttle here, I'm only 40% maybe. Nice, clean, haven't touched the brakes yet. Haven't touched the brakes at all, never touched the brakes there. Just nice, clean throttle. That's basically the story with this bike. It's got your comfortable seating position, it's got your electronic suspension that's active, keeps you settled and planted on the road. You've got your gear indicator, you've got your fuel gauge, three riding modes, ABS, traction control, wheelie control, heated grips, cruise control, adjustable suspension modes, hard, soft, normal which is a, a recipe for a full-blown sport touring bike. And as I mentioned earlier, the aerodynamic design on this bike is so good that I would have no problem doing a 200 mile all day freeway run, spending all day on the highway or at higher speed. This bike, without the fairings, without the windscreen, does such a good job of pretending as though it's there, as though you just don't know it. And I think that's really the beauty on this bike is that it just has a, such a well-connected design. I think unlike a lot of bikes out there that have, you know, guys drooling over, oh, it has maybe Olin suspension. While Olin suspension is a, is a fantastic product, it doesn't mean that the bike is good. It just means that it has a good component. And on this bike, they put good components, but they tied it all in together very well. The, ch the way that the brakes and the reacts to the chassis and the way that the suspension ties into the chassis and the chassis to the brakes, etc., etc., etc. The way that this package is put together is so complete and so well thought out that I think that this is going to be a very hard bike to beat for other manufacturers. I really think that it's going to take... It's going to take either far better chassis tuning to make it noticeable and it's going to it's going to require a lot. I really don't think that we'll see the S1000 RB in its line of the market just like we have yet to see the S1000 RR really beat. Uh, I mean going to the S1000 RR and HP4 even the HP4 couldn't compete with the S1000 on the track. The S1000 RR is still able to put down better lap times. It's just how good that bike has been and it's really been that good ever since it was updated in 2012. Um, I really just think that BMW hit a home run on this bike. I think if you're looking at it for the fourteen or fifteen thousand dollar price tag that this bike has fully loaded, there's really not going to be too many other options out there where you're going to be able to get a better complete package. Just the fun factor and then how it translates to a serious bike when you need to commute and go to work that's part of the reason I was so anxious to get on this bike is to see is it the whole package and I think it is I think for the road and an occasional track day I mean you just can't beat it if you're gonna have one bike to do it all this might not be a bad option to look at does it have negatives for large riders no does it have negatives for short riders no I think this bike 
sits low. I don't think it has an unusually high seat height at all. I think that for two up riding it's very comfortable and the active suspension also helps adjust the dampening for that. The bike, honestly, I, I'm trying to think of, 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 of some of the big negatives on it and I can't think that there are any big negatives. Uh, I mean, shy of, of, of maybe having slightly less of a buzz at, 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 at your typical freeway speeds and, and being a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit smoother if, the, if that could have been solved by a, maybe a better engine dampening solution or something of that nature. I think that could have made this a little bit, a little bit better for, for somebody who's looking for a really calm package, but it is really a hooligan bike and man, this light is taking forever to change. I'm not sure what's going on, but this is a this is a great package. I want to go down this hill real quick as we get to a conclusion of this video and kind of just do a full second gear pull. Show you what it uh, what the power is like real quick. Looks like we're gonna go here. Maybe not. All right, let's go right and we'll loop around. Let's just do that. See if this light takes a little less time. As I've been sitting at this light, I guess I can tell you one of the things I totally forgot, which is that the when the fan comes on and the bike's running at about 207 degrees right now, I believe the fan might come on as low as 205. Uh, I think that the... I believe that the heat is pretty, pretty damn hot on this bike. Yeah, that light still didn't change for them. All right, so let me try to get down to an idle speed here real quick. So 3,000, come on, let's lower it down. 2,000, second gear still. All right, we're at 2,000 RPM, which we're fine, 18, 18 miles an hour. Let's go from that to full throttle, ready? Here we go. the bike stutter at all there? No. That's the difference with the S1000R to the S1000RR. That 1000 to 4500 RPM area is totally taken care of. It has full response, it's quick, and man, it is so powerful. Third gear. The bike is just such a powerhouse. I don't know what the hell you'd need more power for. This thing is insane for the road. I mean, I would, I would love, can't wait to get this thing on the track in a couple weeks. It should be an absolute blast. What a bike. All right, guys, I think, I think I've hit on everything here. And uh, if you have any questions, if there's anything I missed, please feel free to ask. I plan to be doing more videos uh, this year and through through the end of the year on and uh, again any questions feel free to send me a message post a comment feedback it's all appreciated and if you haven't already please subscribe thank you take care